too many unknowns out there in the Gulf. Come see the oil all over the water. It's something in my 51 year that I never seen before. With the deep water horizon spill, it's going to take decades to centuries to truly clean it up, letting Mother Nature do it by her own devices. The impact this could have on the food web is really a great concern. If you even ask me if I'm going to eat the seafood, I'll say no. And to this day, I can't figure out why it is that the EPA and the Coast Guard and our federal government has allowed the use of substances five times more toxic than the oil itself when there are non-toxic solutions out there. The hidden crisis in the Gulf. On April 20th, 2010, the Deepwater Horizon oil rig exploded, tragically ending the lives of 11 people. This began the greatest man-made environmental catastrophe in the history of the United States. For months, millions of barrels of oil gushed into the Gulf of Mexico, threatening the health of the entire Gulf Coast of the U.S. The disaster did not end with the capping of the well. In fact, it has been made worse and perpetuated by the use of toxic chemical dispersants that are destroying the economy, human health, and sea life of the Gulf. The real disgrace is that there is a down-to-earth, thorough, and comparatively inexpensive solution to bringing the waters back to their pre-oil blowout condition, but government regulators are preventing it from being used. Stay with us as we expose the hidden crisis in the Gulf and what you can do about it. Well, it was almost unbelievable at first. I mean, it was like there was so many dead animals and the birds were sick and then it sort of did start to hit us that I mean this is a, a serious symptom of, of impacts that could be happening all across the, uh, the coast. We have had uh, fellows who've gotten rashes and skin problems. It is way too early to be saying everything's fine and there's no health problems. Way too early for that. Recently, uh, he's been swelling up, uh, like all over his body, his arm, he said, in his sides here and his leg, and, he, and it's real itchy and he scratches and stuff, and then he'll go away and come back and stuff like that. When I have had to be out on the water and the smell was strong, I noticed that my sinuses burn, really burn for a couple of days. Other people say the same thing. If I'm out and I have to spend too much time where the smell is strong, some days you can really smell it. I never get seasick. I'm not a person who gets seasick, but I will throw up all the way to shore. People whose lives and livelihoods depend upon one of the three key industries in the Gulf have experienced overwhelming economic challenges and their families' survival, as well as their businesses and jobs, continue to be in danger. We worked 28 years of my life for nothing, you know, when, uh, you know, you have this kind of spill and it just, um, just put me out of business. What the local fishermen feel is that they can't go harvest the seafood safely and eat it safely and feed it to their children safely. So everything we depended on comes out of the water. There are uh, very few shrimp out there. The guys go out, they trawl all day and they catch very few shrimp. There's not much out there right now. He said even if um, he goes and harvests crabs, there's not much. Uh, shrimpers say there's not much shrimp out there either. Said there's not enough shrimp out there to make a po' boy. The area of the island that we were on was littered with dead birds. Um, it's hard to understand what 
could be happening except it's related to the oil spill that the they're being poisoned by the oil itself they're eating or they're eating creatures that have you know they're contaminated with the oil when he pulls up the uh, the crab traps um, there's still there's oil residue on the crab traps and the disaster is not over until the Gulf waters have recovered to their pre-spill condition the public's confidence in the cleanliness of the water and beaches and the safety of the seafood will not be fully restored. If you even ask me if I'm going to eat the seafood, I'll say no. We don't have information on oil that has come ashore and how it has affected the general public. We, we do have some indications there's been some efforts of monitoring cleanup crews as they uh, cleaned up the oil and we have uh, reported incidences to state health officials uh, in all four states, I believe, certainly here in Louisiana, where we've attributed the classic symptoms of human exposure to some uh, irritating chemical uh, as being present. You know, irritated throat, skin rash, nausea, disorientation. A classic model of anyone in any workplace being exposed to uh, something that is uh, uh, certainly not healthy. As bleak as the situation is, there is good news. There are techniques out there which can help solve the problem and quickly and do it really well. Maybe we would have been able to hit it a lot harder and a lot faster and a lot easier and a lot more cheaply with better results if you at least take a look at some of these other things and utilize them. Let's start with the most basic principle. Mother Nature, left alone, will eventually clean up the spill. So what is the purpose of taking extra steps to clean up oil spills? Why not just let Mother Nature do her job? There is a very exact answer to that question. Because time is important in a salt marsh. The longer the oil stays, the more deleterious or dangerous it is. It is imperative to clean up an oil spill to reduce the toxicity to the environment as quick as possible. The word toxin means a poison that injures health or destroys life when absorbed by a body. So when something is toxic, it is poisonous. So that oil is already robbing the marsh of available oxygen and so forth. So it becomes a race on how quickly you get the oil out or degrade it versus letting it sit there and consume the oxygen. And that's the basic reason you clean up an oil spill, is so that even single-celled organisms can live, and by them being able to live, then you know everything else in the environment will be able to survive. 